How's it going, everybody? Brian Elders and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio. It is Easter Sunday, March 31, 2024, figure4online.com wrestlingobserver.com. So, so that's why we're doing a show tonight? And that's why we're doing a show tonight. Because tomorrow's Easter. Although I'm doing another show tomorrow night, so. Oh, you are? It's not preventing me, but. Uh, oh, yeah. I'm going to be on the this road. Is, this is much easier to uh, yeah. get this done here. You in Philadelphia? I am not. You're not? Okay. I am not. I, I'm I not, actually. I'm not either. I wanted to. I was planning on it. And then th- things came up. I regret that I'm not going, but it's it's going to be much easier to do it here. I, I, I don't regret it because it's, um, it's going to be insane. I mean, I was just looking at everything from Thursday until Sunday, and it's just like I don't even have time to breathe. Well, I will have time to breathe, but. Well, I hope you have time to breathe. I think I, I might have time to breathe. You're doing much of a breathe. show. It's yeah, actually, the, the issue is that uh, my kid's spring break starts the day after WrestleMania, mm-hmm. and they are actually leaving for spring break on Saturday to mm-hmm. go to, uh, uh, actually, the Bay Area, and, oh, really? then, and then going up why, north. Why are they going to the Bay Area? Because family or? Uh, family's there. And then, oh, yeah, uh, okay, yeah, 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 right. We're going to spend a week in the Redwoods, but this would have required me to... Uh, you know, go to Philadelphia and then somehow get from Philadelphia to the Redwoods, watch Raw after WrestleMania while doing that. It just was it just wasn't going to work. So uh, hopefully I will go next year. That is the plan. Yeah, man, that's crazy. I mean, I just think about all those shows. Um, I, I'd like, you know, Friday and Saturday are just in, are completely, especially Saturday. Well, no, they're both insane. Friday and Saturday are both completely insane. It's like I don't know how to make that work. Thursday is going to be tough enough, but. Man, I look at Friday and Saturday, and I just like. Well, honestly, not being there, I'll probably be able to watch more than if I did go. Yeah, I mean, well, me too, me too. Yeah, I mean, there's so much stuff that you can watch now. I mean, you can watch anything really. And I just signed up for the uh, CMLL on YouTube, thirty five dollars. Oh yeah, thirty five dollars a month. But at yeah. least I'm going to get Brian Danielson and Blue Panther next week, and I watched the CMLL main event from yesterday, which was fucking great. The whole show was great. Yes, the- I got to watch more. Yeah, yeah, the the Rocky Romero match you should watch, and I mean the, well the the Cavernario match was great, and the um, but I mean the whole show was so heated. I mean it was just like uh, so much fun to watch. The crowd just was going just completely nuts for almost everything. So I mean I just um, yeah it was it was definitely I I was expecting to really love the show, and I liked it even more. So yeah. Well, before we talk about the main event, we should talk about uh, how this whole Brian Danielson Blue Panther match even came about. What is what is the story here? Okay, so so, so um, basically, the the story was that um, there's there's a reporter named Apollo Valdez who writes for um, Super Luchas magazine. So um, you know, before WrestleMania 30, so it's ten years ago. Um, he was uh, going to go to um, the WrestleMania, you know, in um, and uh, he was at um, a show and he recorded a video with Blue Panther where Blue Panther thanked Brian Danielson because Brian Danielson had always said like he wanted to have a dream match with Blue Panther. Blue Panther is one of his all time favorite wrestlers. So Blue Panther had found out about it and he just said like he made a video for, for Brian Danielson. And he gave Brian Danielson an autographed Blue Panther mask. And um, Brian Danielson got all emotional at WrestleMania 30 when he got, when Apollo uh, Valdez gave him the mask. And, um, you know, said that uh, Blue Panther sent him, you know, um, an autographed mask and everything like that. And there's actually a video of that on YouTube somewhere. And then uh, yesterday, after the, the show um, was over, um, there was a situation where, um, you know, they issued the challenge for next week. So, so Brian Danielson and Blue Panther are doing a singles match next Friday. So anyway, um, Blue Panther saw him and thanked him and said that the reason this all happened was because of him. And um, Valdez basically said that uh, um, after the show at Arena Mexico en- ended, I approached the tunnel where Blue Panther was and I saw him taking photos and Carlos Acosta of Super Luchas told me to take a picture with him because I'd helped make this match possible. 
Because the whole reason this match happened, the reason Moxley went, the reason Claudio went, the reason that they had this match was obviously because Brian Danielson wanted to wrestle Blue Panther and everybody wanted to help Brian Danielson achieve one of his dreams, which just happened last night. And um, so that's the basic gist of it. And then um, Panther, um, after the show, said that I've been looking for you for years because he hadn't seen Valdez in five years. And, you know, he asked everyone if he was if you were there because I want to thank you because it's thanks to you that and the video that we did um, at Ring Call Sale in Monterey, you know, right before WrestleMania, that this match is happening and you are responsible for this. And um, Valdez said it choked me up because even though others have said similar things, as I mentioned, I've never been given that credit. But Blue Pan for Blue Panther to say that to me, it meant a lot. The video is a small part of the whole conversation we had he introduced me to his wife and son and told them he's the one who gave brian danielson the mask and that that is what made this and then made the video and because of that this happened so anyway that's the story behind everything it's this this match was 10 years in the making directly and probably 20 years in the making and you know because you know, Brian Danielson probably started watching Blue Panther, I'm going to guess, in the 90s. You know, if that's, I'm going to guess. So probably 25 years in the making, maybe. Well, the uh, the main event was Mystico, Volador Jr., Blue Panther, and Ultimo Guerrero versus Moxley, Claudio, Brian Danielson, and Matt Seidel. And seeing the lineups, this was this was a one fall match, but it was it was uh, it was a captain's fall match, which means well, they, you they're have all to captains pin the falls. captain, or you have to pin two of the other guys. Right. So as soon as they announced that the captain of the AW team was Matt Seidel, I know that, that I like, gave well, away. Uh, I, I thought that gave away the finish too. That, that I mean, we all knew the finish. I mean, it was pretty obvious going in. I mean, if you watch AEW, it's like these poor CMLL wrestlers. I mean. Anytime they were in the ring with someone from AEW, they got beaten. And, you know, they pretty much. Well, Mystico, to... Mystico and um, uh, some of the others got some wins, but not over top guys. No, it was always over low level guys. Yeah. So you knew that there was going to be, you know, CMLL getting their big win in Arena Mexico. And uh, they had. This match was. The heat was unbelievable. The whole and... show. The heat was unbelievable the whole show. Although this match was, I think, the most heated, although the semi was pretty close when it came to heat and even the 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 Cavernario match with um um uh, what's it Averno had I mean, every match had great heat you know it it was just up and down the show this was i think that like somebody described it to me that was there live and said that it was like the um Canadian Stampede pay-per-view in 97 and that was kind of like my take on it too well it was that's what it felt like especially that yeah. main event yeah. It didn't go 30-something minutes. I think it went like 18 minutes or something like that. But, so, but the whole show. I mean, Mystico... Well, here's the thing. So you had you had, mock, you had the, the AW team were clearly the Rudos here. And uh, boy, did they work like it. They beat the shit out of these CMLL uh, guys. Especially Ultimo Guerrero. Oh, my God. They pounded on that guy. I yeah, mean, they but, pounded on him. But that guy is... It's like, even though he's a Rudo, what a great baby face he was in this match oh yeah he, he was unbelievable he got pounded on and but every time he started making the comeback the place went nuts they you know went, what i mean they went nuts because it doesn't matter if he's a baby face or a heel he was facing team cmll so he was a hero yeah and and of course whenever the baby faces made their comeback i mean the bcc and sidel i mean man they sold for these guys they and, they they worked so well with them yeah i mean it was it was like it was amazing to watch this match and see, like how well everybody worked together. Right at, a, at, the, at the style because exactly because years ago when you would have like big time American stars go to Arena Mexico, they would punch and kick and they'd wave the flag and they'd do all the shortcuts and the but the actual wrestling was usually not that good because the style problems and what's happened is is that. The the um, the Mexican wrestlers have learned more how to work with the Americans and the Americans like these guys, like they didn't go down there as 
arrogant Americans and we're going to just do our style and, and Mexican style is stupid, which was used to be like a lot of the big things like, oh, Mexican style it makes no sense. It's fake. It's stupid. All wrestling's fake, by the way. All wrestling's stupid, by the way, if you look at it as like if it's being real. So they would go down there and that, that was usually what happened. You know, you'd have like not very good matches, but matches that had great amount of heat. And these guys, they went in there and they went in and did you know, the style, but they understood what they were doing. It, you know, it was like, it was so different. I mean, the the attitude of, of all four of the Americans that went there, or well, Claudia's not American, but all four of the of the um, AEW guys was, we're going to work in a Marina Mexico main event, and we know what did, you know, we, they studied it, and we, they know what it is, and they weren't out there just winging it at all. Well, you know, I don't want to uh, talk too much about the guy, nor make this come across as if I'm glorifying him, but, you know, I I actually once talked to Chris Benoit about uh, Mexico because he had worked in America, uh, Canada, Japan, and Mexico. He worked at uh, UWA. He, oh, oh, was it UWA? Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, wait. Uh, Chris Benoit worked... Um... I think it was U- I think it was UWA. The, yeah. the, the point yeah, it was, was it, worked, it wasn't it wasn't um he didn't work in Mexico. He worked all these different styles of wrestling and so I I said like uh you know how did you you know go down there and work lucha? And he goes I didn't. I just did my style. I beat the hell out of people. Yeah. So he didn't even try. But if you look at like Claudio wrestled for years in Chikara, he can do lucha. Matt Seidel has done a, a lucha based style for years and years and years. And John Moxley and and Danielson I mean, Moxie was just in there doing a Moxie match. He was just beating the hell out of people, and he hit his cutters. Yeah, but he, so, like he, he, but he, so, but he sold the right of way. Of course, of course. And you know, Brian Danielson wasn't in there doing like a bunch of Hurricane Ranas or anything. He did a, a Brian Danielson match. Him and Mystico even did the, you know, the yes and the no spot and everything like that. But everybody did what they were great at, and you know, the, the team AW they they got their heat. They sold. Uh, Mystico ended up submitting Seidel. Uh, just a, I mean, this match was just, it was just flat out great. This was a great, great match. Amazing heat. And then, yes, it is Blue Panther and Brian Danielson this coming Friday yep. at Arena Mexico. So if you bought your subscription to that CMLL channel on YouTube for 35 bucks, don't cancel it yet. Because there's well, another you get, one you're going to want to watch on well, Friday. You, well, you get the you get the thing you get the thing you get all the all the Friday shows. Yes, I mean, yes. they're also going to have the Universal Tournament this month, so there's a lot of stuff going on. The Champion of Champions Tournament. They have all the champions, um, all the singles, tag team, and trios champions all go into a tournament that lasts three weeks to crown the Champion of Champions. So that's going to be going on. But um, there were times, and it wasn't once like. Every now and then, like you, you know, like in, um, and it's it, it's very very rare. But every now and then, you'll have these matches in the United States or Canada, where literally the crowd is going so crazy, you feel it's like the earthquake thing. Yes, and it, that happened three times in this match, where they were just, just, uh, you know, the just exploding, like stomping their feet or whatever, and the, it was shaking. I mean, it was amazing. Yeah, I, I mean this, this this doesn't happen in Arena Mexico. This, this I mean Arena Mexico has a lot a lot of heat, and I've seen some incredible matches there. But but this was unusual even for Arena Mexico. This is not normal Arena Mexico either. It was um, there were a lot of Americans in the crowd. Um, I uh, you know, and this this also was different from the usual Arena Mexico in, in the sense that usual Arena Mexico is probably about forty percent tourists. But this one, because the show sold out three weeks ahead. There were no tourists, except for the wrestling fans who may have bought tickets, you know, going down there. Um, you know, it isn't like, you know, your tourists that aren't wrestling fans who are there, and, and you, basically they have a deal there where they have uh, tour buses. And, you know, you you know you do the tour bus and you go all over the city or whatever. You go to, you know, famous celebrities' homes or you go to the sightseeing tours or whatever. One of the things in Mexico City is – is that the tour bus, you pay whatever it is, you know, I don't know what the price is, and they, you know, hook you up for some drinks, go to the Arena Mexico, and uh, you just go out there and have fun, and they bring you right back to your hotel room. They take you from your hotel and bring you right back. And they didn't do that for tonight because there were no tickets. So um, 
it was more of a wrestling crowd than usual, but it was more heated than usual. And um, one of the things that that benefited is, is there's there's certain spots that the Mexicans do that the tourists don't know. You know what I mean? It's like if you're watching WWE and you've never watched WWE before um, or, or AEW or anything, there's certain spots that like would be over big to the wrestling fans. But if you're not a wrestling fan and you watched it, you wouldn't get them at all. And this time... Those spots that, that, like, up and down the show, the, the trademark spots, like, everyone in the crowd knew, whereas on the tourist show, you know, on a, on a regular show, you know, some of the crowd will know, but a lot of the crowd will have no idea, but they're just there for the fun and the moves. So, um, you know, so it, it was it was probably easier, more heated. Um, you know, the, you know, Bryce Remsburg played heel ref a little bit, too. So that was kind of easy. I'm not, you know, he, he didn't do it overtly. There was like one or two spots where the crowd kind of turned on him when he was uh, looking right at the AEW guys who were destroying Ultimo Guerrero four-on-one. Um, you know, but, yeah, Ultimo Guerrero did a lot of selling. Um, Mystico was basically the glory guy, you know, where he would come in and just fly around and do all that stuff. And, you know, Volador as well and everything. And, um Blue Panther and Brian. The crowd knew Blue Panther and Brian Danielson. They sure they, did. Because when they would get in, the place would go completely nuts. Well, take us through the rest of the show. Okay. So, um, yeah, I would say that, you know, like, this is a show to go out of your way to see. I mean, so it was Neon and Brillante, Briante against Rujito and Magnus for the Mexican National Tag Team titles. And this match, okay, the crowd's super hot. Okay, the crowd was super hot for this, but I felt these, you know, Neon and Brillante are both, you know, new guys. You know, I think they're, I don't know how many, I think Neon's in his second year in, and he's going to be a superstar. You know, I mean, a couple years from now, I mean, he'll be a, he'll be like one of the top guys in the world. You know what I mean? He'll be like when Vikingo came to the United States and all that. I mean, he's just, he's incredible. Um, but, you know, still green and everything like this. This felt watching it like a little too much of a dance for me you know it just seemed a little too practiced i guess um the, but the crowd was so hot you know so it's like it's almost and 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 you know they were going crazy for the near falls and the moves were mostly really good there might have been a hiccup here and there but also completely outstanding moves um and the finish um uh, what was it? Uh, Rubito did an arm drag and an arm bar on Neon right in the middle of the ring. And Magnus also uh, pinned Brillante, Briante at the same time. And there was like super heat for the heels winning the match. So, um, you know, fun opener for sure. They also went through um, these matches, um, like the early matches, because they had so much on the card, they were a lot shorter than usual. So I kind of felt like, you know... Um, like these matches, they they went just under ten minutes, and and like these matches, like on a normal show, would be like, you know, probably fifteen. So it was a little, you know, especially in this one, I I really felt everybody was very rushed because they wanted to get all their stuff in, and they knew that they didn't have the usual time to like space it out. Then we had Esfinge and Zondacon Jr., which would be for the Mexican National Light Heavyweight Title, which was a little better um, than the first match. Um, very, very good, bordering on excellent. Um, Esfinge used this. Um, it's 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 like a bunch of moves that end up in a bridging leg lock, but the way he does it, it's like really spectacular. And he actually did it twice in in the match, and the crowd went absolutely nuts for both for both times. Like the heat was even better than the first match. Um, Esfinge looked like his back was all acting up. I mean, he was, he looked like he was hurting, but he just went through it and everything like that. And then, uh, what was it? Um, yeah, he got out of a tombstone, and then he did a bunch of moves and ended up in this leg, that ended up in this leg lock. Then it was Averno and uh, Cavernario um, for the uh, CMLL World Light Heavyweight title. Uh, Cavernario was the champion, of course. And um, Super Heat, this was... You know, the third best match on the show. Just um, really great match. I mean, I'm I'm actually impressed as far as Cavernario, how well he moves, because he ain't going to be move. He, he's done so much stuff with his knees um, that there's no way when he's like 40 that he's going to be 
able to move well. But he had a good night tonight, or yesterday, I should say. And um, the finish was uh, Averno put Cavernario in La Cavernaria. Cavernario's finishing move made him submit in the middle of the ring. There were a bunch of submissions right in the cor- in the ropes on both sides. Cavernario had that move on once, but Averno made the ropes. And um, Averno had, uh, what was the submission he had um, earlier? Um, he had a, he had a, oh, he, he was doing ham- uh, flip dive, pedigree off the middle rope. Um, armbar in the middle, and uh, that was great. The armbar in the middle, I mean, Cavernari was selling it so well and got to the ropes like right at the perfect time for maximum. Like, like right, the heat just built and built and built, and when you could just see it was kind of right at that perfect. He hit that rope and made that rope break at the perfect time. It was such incredible work, and and um, the place went nuts again for the championship change. So they got a. And there's the only title change on the show. Uh, then we had a four-way mask match with minis. It was Angelito, Acero, Pequeño, Olimpico, and Pe- Pequeño pair off. And it was an elimination match. So um, the way it was is that if you got eliminated, which in theory, losing was to your advantage, if you actually try to make sense of this. So please do not try to make sense of this. Because when you got eliminated... That means you're out of the match, so you don't have to. So your mask is no longer at stake. So um, um, it was a uh, Pieroth, um, Pieroth, the Pieroth, the or Pequeno Pieroth beat Acero with an armbar in the middle. So because Acero lost, he didn't lose his mask. He's out of the match. And then we had um, Olimpico pinning Pieroth, so he's out of the match. The match. So then it came down to Olimpico and Angelito. And they went like three more minutes, and um, Angelito won a, did a, basically a vertical suplex, dropped into a DDT. Uh, not really that good, you know. I mean, I would I would say below average. A lot of um, there's a lot of cool moves. There was very good heat, but um, I don't know. It just I didn't I didn't think it was really that good of a match at all. And then um, um, uh, was it um. Olympico was unmasked as Andre Munoz Andrade. And then we had a, the women's match, which was Catalina, Willow Nightingale, and Tessa Blanchard against um, Juvia Zeusis and Stephanie Becker. And this was, like, this match ranged at times. I mean, the, the heat was very good. At, at times, a lot of the match was very good. At other times, it wasn't good. There were some problems here and there. Um, Willow, super charisma, um, got over great. Tessa Blanchard, great worker. Um, but she did not have the charisma of Willow Nightingale. Willow Nightingale got over more than, than, than Blanchard. But Blanchard's work itself was, was great. And then uh, on the other team, you know, uh, Stephanie Ficare was very good. And um, it ended up with... Um, the crowd was very, very hot, and then Willow clo- clotheslined Stephanie Vicare and then pinned her clean with a doctor bomb. And Stephanie Vicare has all kinds of championships, including the New Japan Strong Women's title. So I'm presuming that uh, Willow Nightingale and Stephanie Vicare will be wrestling for uh, some championship, whether it's going to be in Mexico or whether whether, whether this comes going to be on the Chicago show. Um, I don't think it's going to be on the Chicago show, but... That, but at somewhere, some point, whether it's in Mexico or somewhere else, uh, they will be wrestling for um, one of Stephanie Vicar's championships. And um, Willow Willow wrestled there again tonight at Arena Coliseo, and they had another big crowd there. And she's wrestling on Monday, I believe. No, Sunday. I take that back. She's wrestling tomorrow at Arena Mexico again. And that's so she's doing three days. Everybody else had to fly home for uh, or fly home. They went. They had two thirty a.m. flights to get to, uh, I think it was Kingston, Ontario, and then drive to London, Ontario. And, uh, you know, they got in and they did their match tonight, but she stayed. And then they honored Tony Salazar and um, Salvador Luteroth, the original Salvador Luteroth, which they do every year. And then uh, the semi was incredible partners. They've been doing a tournament for two weeks, so this was the finals with the two block winners. So it's basically incredible partners is guys who hate each other that are feuding. So you had 
Rocky Romero and Mosca Dorada as one team, and then you had Atlantis Jr. and Soberano Jr. as the other team. Um, Atlantis Jr. is a technical, but the crowd booed him somewhat. They loved, I think there was a lot of Americans in the audience that just loved Rocky. Soberano, the other Rudo, was cheered by women like crazy. I mean, they were just screaming for this guy. This guy, it's like he is, um, I always, as soon as he made the turn a couple months back, you know, I started watching his, his, I mean, I was always watching his matches, but his, he reminds me so much, not in any ring style whatsoever, but as far as the ability to get heat, the ability to be arrogant, and the ability to get women to like him, but at the same time be this contemptible, absolutely contemptible Rudo and the way, he, you know, bumps and sells and everything of, uh, of a very young Gino Hernandez. I mean, he's a million times better wrestler than Gino, but I mean, as far as a personality, Gino Hernandez was a great personality, especially when he was young in Houston. And that's what I, when I was watching, go, this is Gino in Houston. Um, like I said, not in ring style, but in ring the way he carries himself and the way he gets the crowd to react. This match was, was every bit as heated as the main event. You know, I mean, it was the same. I wouldn't say, I would not say more, but the same. And um, they did all kinds of stuff because it was, you know, the partners wouldn't get along and dives and, you know, everything. And Rocky just, man, that guy knows how to work here. I mean, like, he, everything he does is like the right thing. I mean, he's he's got the ability, but he's got the experience of working in Arena Mexico as a Rudo. But, you know, again, bec you know, because there were a lot of Americans in the crowd, they, there was a lot of chance for Rocky. And the match went... Uh, 17 and a half minutes, and in the end, um, Atlantis had the match won, and the referee was distracted, and um, Soberano cost his team the match. Um, well, he just first he distracted the referee while Atlantis was was had the pin on uh, uh, Rocky. Um, he did a frog splash on Rocky, and then Soberano distracted the ref. So he's basically just keeping his own team from winning. And then, um, uh, what was it? Then uh, Mosca Dorada was complaining, and then the ref went with him. And then Soberano uh, gave Atlantis a low blow, but Atlantis blocked it. So then Soberano unmasked Atlantis, and then Rocky Romero pinned Atlantis to win it. So... Soberano basically, you know, turned on his partner. Soberano was beating up Atlantis after the match. And then Rocky Romero turned on Mosca Dorada after the match as well. And then they got their trophies, which was supposed to be Rocky and um, uh, Mosca Dorada. They were the ones who won the tournament. So they got their trophies. And then uh, Rocky got the trophy. Dorada had been laid out. So Rocky got the trophy, gave it to, to Soberano, and they both threw those trophies over the top rope, or I think maybe Rocky threw both of them, but one of the trophies he threw over the top and it broke, and the other one it just bounced, so it didn't break, but whatever. And um, that was uh, pretty much it. Yeah, Rocky was the one who threw both trophies to the floor. And then, um, yeah, so, you know, Rocky and, you know, Atlantis Jr. and Sobrano Jr. is going to be a feud coming off of this, uh, and they've already been feuding, but it increases that, and we're obviously going to get more Rocky Romero and Mosca Dorada matches too. So, um, yeah, what a, like, you know, it's, it was about, uh, you know, three hour show or whatever it was, but I mean, like not one minute was slow and not, you know, never was the crowd down except in the minis match. And, and that even had good heat and they were throwing the giant balls in the crowd and they were doing the big wide crowd shots and the, you know, with, Whatever it is, 15,000 people. They say 16.5. I don't believe it holds that much anymore because that stage in the uh, the restaurant. But, you know, well over 15,000 probably in the building. And, um, man, that atmosphere, it's like there's very few times uh, where I see something like this. There's only two times in probably the last year where I saw something where it's like I am really mad I didn't go. And that was this one in the uh, Will Ospreay Michael Oku match in uh, London where it was just like, I mean, I just was, when that match was over, I was just like, 
goddamn, if you guys had told me you were going to do this, I'd have flown to London and taken my kids. That's how great that match was. And this was another one where I kind of feel really bad now because, um, man, I would have, this would have, this would have been like, as a live show, I've always wanted to go to Reno, Mexico, and never have. And there's oh, brother, there's always of, Friday. I'm not bad timing. Friday. Not going. <laughs> it's Friday. When the hell am I going to even get to watch that match? I will try to watch that match. I didn't even get to watch the freaking today. I had to watch three shows because I watched this show the first thing when I woke up, and then and SmackDown also, and then um, I didn't even get to watch the Yuma Anz Yuma Anzai won the uh, Triple Crown from Katsuhiko Nakajima in Tokyo today, and I didn't get to watch that. And um, I didn't hear like match of the year great, but. It was one of those where um, the crowd, like women in the crowd were all crying because Anzai won because nobody expected him to win. I mean, second year pro, they put the triple crown on him. I mean, they've been giving him a push from day one, but I didn't, I don't think anyone in the world believed he was winning this match. And he did. And it was um, fantastic booking because it's, it's like what you never do. You know, and people go like, he's too young. How can he win the title this early? He didn't pay his dues, blah, 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 blah. And then he did it, and the place just went completely, you know, crazy for that win. And hopefully he will be able to maintain this momentum. But he's the guy, you know. I mean, he's he's going to be one of the big, big, big stars in Japan. I was going to say of the future, but he's already there today. So, um, you know, and, and Nakajima, of course, great guy to win the title from because Nakajima had all that heat, you know, from his incredible matches in the short period he was champion and winning the title and the matches with um, Miyahara, the, the two matches with Miyahara and the match with Yuma Aoyagi in, in, in particular. Well, you mentioned uh, the guys that had to make it to Collision and uh, the Saturday Night Collision show, kind of we a should, little bit. We should, we should bring up uh, Ricky Starks real quick. Well, we way. will, but I want to make uh, notes here that uh, it was very much like the Dynamite show in that we had a Excellent opener in an excellent main event, and the rest of the show was was all right. But yes, Ricky Starks, they did a uh, couple of tournament matches here on the show in the tag team tournament. It was Big Bill and Ricky Starks versus Top Flight, and Darius was making a comeback, and he tried a run-up-the-ropes Pele kick, and at first, Ricky goes down hard, and he starts to kind of roll out of the ring, and then he, like, grabs at his shoulder, and I know... As we get to this, you know, people were very hard on the referee, but the referee immediately went over to him, and it appeared that Ricky said that he was all right. And so he goes outside for a second, and he ends up getting back into the ring, and Darius goes for a reverse rolling cradle with a headstand, and Ricky didn't kick out. And the referee stopped counting. Yeah. And Darius kind of fell off of him, and Ricky stayed upside down with his shoulders down, it was almost like he was like couldn't get up, but then he did get up. But he did get up, and yeah. then he did another spot, and then he took a DDT, and you could see Darius on this one, like he's talking right to the referee, like count the pin on this one, yeah. and so he pinned him. And uh, this is not one hundred percent confirmed, but we all basically heard the same story, which was that it appears to be a stinger, and uh, did not appear to be a concussion. Yeah, uh, Starks. Did Stark said that he was okay? Yes, uh, on social media, from what I understand. Yes, so uh, hopefully, you know, Stinger, and he's all right now. You know, sometimes you get him, and then a few hours later, you're good. Certainly better than a concussion. Certainly better than a serious neck injury. Well, I, mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, a bad Stinger's a bad Stinger is a serious thing too. Sure, if it's bad. If it's bad, they're all you know, they're all. You know, none of it's none of it's good, but sometimes sometimes stingers aren't too bad in the sense that you're okay very soon after. Sometimes they're really bad though, so yeah. Yeah, I can't uh I can't really you know, there have been some matches where, you know, we've asked the question, where's the ref? The Sammy match. Where's the ref? Where's the doctor? Why well, the doctor it? was there in the Sammy match, but you know, they didn't they there's some miscommunication. Yes, there. and in this one you know, they, Everybody was communicating. Yeah, they they probably could have communicated better. Like you know, let's go home on the reverse rolling cradle with the headstand. Somehow that didn't get to the referee, but it got to the referee on the very next spot. So uh, they they took it home there. But uh, hopefully Ricky's all right. But yeah, this yeah. the show opened. There's with, one more thing on the show too. Um, yes. So Ian Riccoboni was there, 
um, it's not a permanent move for him to be there. What happened was um, Tony Schiavone's dog died, and um, best wishes to Tony Schiavone. Um, Really, really hard day for him, but he came. He was there, but they didn't know. I mean, he was, you know, Tony certainly could have taken it off and and you know there'd have been no heat and because of that they you know they brought Ian up there so that's the reason that Ian was there I thought like oh you know because Kevin Kelly obviously has been gone that Ian's going to be permanent guy and I was told no he was there because you know if Tony didn't want to work Ian would be there um and and lead the show but Tony wanted to work so um anyway that's the story on that one well I want to say one other thing about the show which was my number one complaint about this show Home Invasion? Yeah. What about it? I've seen it. On where? Rampage? Twice. Yeah, Rampage. Bro, Rampage is the least watched AEW show. Yes. Okay. Tony Schiavone they, they, comes out. They they, they, they they should have shown a clip. That's Absolutely. my point. Absolutely. I agree with you. Wednesday, they, they did a great job with video packages and recaps and everything. And Tony Schiavone comes out and he's going to interview the acclaimed and daddy ass and the first thing he says is, you know, I hear the uh, guns and or the, he, he just flat out said, Jay White and the guns invaded Billy's house. Yeah, well, they did. And I was like, what? Can yeah, we please did. have a video or like something? They, well, they talked put, about they this did, they, like they, everybody they, knew what happened. They did put it on social media. But no, absolutely. They should have shown a video. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. needed a video for this because they did a whole segment talking about this home invasion. Yeah. And, well, you know, well, uh, just, it's just Saturday. So you, just, I was just, out all day. Just like, so what you the know- fuck are you talking about? A home invasion? Well, well, just so you know, I saw it, and you probably wouldn't want to see it. It really wasn't good. Was it bad? So, Maybe that's why they didn't air it. Yeah, it wasn't. I mean, it was, It was as home invasions go, it was so corny. Like, it's, it's basically they come in to the house, and it's not like they're breaking in because it's, it's the kids, they got a key. So they come into the house. It's not like a break-in. Jay White's got a bat, okay, and he's knocking a few things over, you know, like knocking some stuff off of the kitchen table or whatever, um, and then he sees the TV set. Now, think about this. Now, now, nobody's home, okay, So, which, you know, I mean, like, hey, look, I've probably done this too. Nobody's home, and they have freaking pro wrestling on the TV, but nobody's home. So they're going to the room with the with the big screen TV, and it's got AEW on TV. Thankfully, it's not WWE or something. And Jay White goes... Actually, should have been WWE. Like <laughs> WWE came on, so they left. That's why no one's yeah. home. Yeah. By the way, the, I, I don't know if it was if, if, if you saw this, but um, I know that where we, where we were, um, our cable, we had um, so many commercials for that freaking Roman Reigns show tomorrow night on, on, on oh, I uh, saw Collision. Them. Yeah, yep. yeah. So WWE advertised all over the place. Or A&E. It wouldn't be WWE. It would be A&E would do it. And and they should. You know, that's where they should. But, yeah, I saw so many of those. So, anyway, they're about to um, – and they had them on Friday night, too. But they had to um, – uh, Jay White was about to use his gold baseball bat and uh, smash the big screen TV. And then Billy and his wife walk in, and they just all run away. Well, they had announced. Uh, they announced in that segment that uh, they're going to do Jay White and Billy Gunn, and that. these are their exact words: "We'll see how good you really are, Jay." We sure will. Truer words. We never sure been will. Spoken. We sure will, boy. Yeah, and then they're going to do uh, the trios title match on the pay per view. Yes. For whose titles? All of them. And just for the AEW titles. Mm. They should just unify these. Get it over with. Yep, yeah, I agree. Well, Adam they, Copeland... They need, they, need to, they need to unify about eight of these titles. Yes, they do. Actually, they unified one and then they split it apart again. So. <laughs> I know. Matt Cardone ended up being the opponent for Adam Copeland in his uh, open challenge. And my God, this guy they, came out. They had great heat. The fans chanted, holy shit. They put him over huge as the king of the indies. You could tell, like, this crowd... They had about 4,000, which is probably the best collision number they've done in I don't even know how long. And, man, these people knew Matt Cardona. And they knew about uh, Adam Copeland and the woo-woo guy from back in the day. Yeah, from Major's Brothers. Yep. And they they were super into this match. And they had a great match. Good heat. They did very well, yeah. A lot of great comeback and spots there at the end. 
And, uh, you know, Cardona goes for, uh, whatever they call it now, it used to be the Rough Rider. Uh, Radio Silence. Radio Silence. He hit that for a good near fall. And finally he goes for it again. Adam speared him, got the pin. Just a, a great opener. Yeah, they, and did, then, they did re- really well done match, yeah. And then Malachi appeared afterwards. And uh, so this this House of Black, dude. So Malachi appears in the ring for a stare down. Mm-hmm. And Buddy jumps Adam, Adam from behind. Yeah. And Mark Briscoe's music hits. And man, this guy, the place goes nuts. He runs down a house of fire. He didn't even hit one move, and they, they just beat killed, his ass. They just killed him. I was like, God, can we give the guy... He's going for the Ring of Honor title next week. Friday night. Can we give him something? I agree with you there. And then finally, Eddie Kingston appeared, and the House of Black vanished. And so uh, just got a six-man tag on the, pay, on the pay-per-view. Yeah. I thought it was going to be Adam Copeland against uh, Malachi you know, for that title, but they're going to do a six-man tag instead. Yeah, I'm. I'm sure at some point they'll do that match, but uh, God, you poor know. Mark Briscoe just treated like a total geek in this segment. Yeah. Then FTR did a promo. And then anyone did. A, then anyone did a great promo later in the show. He sure did. We'll get to that. FTR promo talking about the infantry tonight. They said there would be no Cinderella story tonight. You know how much better this would have been if they would have looked impressive against the House of Black. Yes. Dax is here talking about it's not going to be a Cinderella story, and I'm like, I know. I watched their last match. They're going to get killed. But God damn, killed. FTR did such a great job with these guys. FTR did a great job. FTR did everything so, so, the House so, of Black should have done with them last week. But the problem was, because the House of Black didn't do that, nobody bought anything in this match. No. They, and they tried. So, some of the near falls at the end, they did, they did the one where they bounced the heads off each other, the FTR, you know, bonked heads. The people kind of bought that. There was like two or three at the end where... It was as good as it was going to be because yes. at the, in the end, like they let themselves go. No, did, uh, did anyone believe that they were going to win? No, of course not. Even though they, but they did their match. best to convince you. Oh my god! But FT- they still F- weren't going to buy it. FTR did a fantastic job. But this is like okay, last week when I was screaming about this, this is exactly why because I knew this was going to happen. And I knew that that's what was supposed to happen. Also, that the idea was is that they would do that in match one and then do it again in match two, but lose. And the idea is to make them as somebody's. And they do some good moves. They're, and they, they're good talkers. They have good charisma. Um, there, were hic- there were hit minor hiccups here and there, but I thought they had a great match. But, um, yeah, it... it, it it's just the first match of that in that tournament was not the match it should have been, and here you go. This this um, this was exactly what it should have been, and maybe even more. But FDR did a, a fantastic job, and and they stayed with them. You know, I mean, all kind all kinds of near falls, like real close ones, and just really. I just thought, like when I watched this match, it was like this is such a well done match, and it's like. It's not just like a well-done, really good pro wrestling match or anything. I mean, it was like, I was going, like, this is like the perfect story of what they should have done last week, or two weeks ago, actually, and what they did do this week. We had uh, the Copeland promo with Mark Briscoe and Eddie Kingston, and Mark mentions, you know, they talk about the six-man coming up at Dynasty, and then Mark says, well, first things first, April 5th, Supercard of Honor, me and Eddie for the title. Eddie says, promise me one thing, dogfight. And Eddie says, you got it. And Eddie and Adam could not keep a straight face as Mark is just Mark Briss going out. And uh, it was a great promo. So yeah. two matches signed up. Eddie, Eddie and, and Mark Briscoe may have a hell of a match on Friday. I'll bet they do. I'll bet they do, too. And Mark should win that title. Yeah. I hope so. It's time. I hope so, It was yeah. time actually about a year ago. but Yeah. Yeah. Athena's wrestling uh, Willow Nightingale on that. Or not Willow Nightingale. I mean, Hikaru Shida. Yeah. On that show. And um, there's, well, Billy Starks and Queen Aminata for the women's TV title, creating yep. another championship that we, we don't need. Another need. belt, yeah. And then there was um, the Stardom women are on the show in a six-woman tag, too. Kyle O'Reilly's uh, mystery opponent, J.D. J. Drake. Drake. And, hey, listen, in a vacuum, they worked They worked well together. It was three-man But match, there was absolutely but... no heat whatsoever. Yeah. And J.D. Well, missed well, they, they, they were They were very into Kyle when he came out, but, but the match... Three minutes and uh, armbar you know. finish. 
Yeah, yeah, Armbar Finish, and that's that, yeah. Kingdom came out, they lifted Kyle up on their shoulders, and, you know, he smiled as they paraded him around. The story is he wants to do this alone. They announced that uh, Dynamite is going to be having the Battle of the Wills. Will Ospreay versus Will Hobbs. Don Callis' family squaring off. That is such an intriguing match because, like I told Garrett, it's like this. Will Ospreay cannot do his normal match, so he's going to have to show his versatility in this one. And, um, well, he did and, and for, a, he and, a different and, kind of match last week, too, with uh, Shibata. Yeah, but this is, this, is, this is completely different from that, too. You know, I mean, like, Shibata, at least in the sense of he's a great wrestler at what he does. And um, not that Hobbs isn't isn't good, but he's not Shibata level at all. Um, but it's just a different kind of match. I mean, I've seen, I've seen Will in matches with powerhouse guys, and he does, look, he, he does match, good match with everybody. He, he does well. I mean, I saw him in a fantastic match with Brian Cage. Um, but, you know, Brian Cage is not, Brian Cage does a completely different style than, than Will Hobbs, even though they're both, they both do powerhouse stuff. But Brian Cage also does a lot of other stuff, whereas, you know, so it, it's, it's an interest. I think it's an interesting match. I think it'll probably be a really good match. Um, and a lot of people I know are very, very excited about it. It's a big, big match for, for uh, Hobbs. I mean, it's a chance for Hobbs to have the best match of his career, you know, because, They'll, you know, they're not going to go like five minutes or eight minutes. It ain't going to be like the Jericho match, you know, where he gets a win, but it's just a one-sided devastation. So um, it's it's a real big opportunity for Hobbs. We had Chris Daniels doing a promo. He'll be facing Malachi Black on Rampage. That came out taped. of nowhere. That was taped tonight, yeah. by the way. Thunder Rosa, Lady Frost. Thunder Rosa won with the Tijuana Bomb. There was no heat. At the end, there was. From the, from the, when they came back from the commercial, the crowd was going nuts. I don't know if now I would first, say they were going nuts. There was they a were light going, Lady Frost chant. They were they were going pretty nuts. The first part of the match, there was no heat, and then when they came back from the commercial, I because I, I was stunned. I was going like, "What the hell happened?" This crowd's like what, going, you know, they're really wild for this. Um, they were they were very into La Lady Frost. Looked good. Lady you know, Frost is often uh, more impressive than the star that she's in the ring with. Yeah, that's happened well, a few times. Well, she she's she is a great gymnast, and she is learning. How, and she went to Mexico, which probably helped because, um, you know, she's been there for a while. She's been down there a couple times too, but she's learning as she gets more experience to use her gymnastics into making a match. At first, when I saw her, it was just kind of like, yeah, she can flip and stuff, and and she does good stuff, but it's not that good. Whereas here, it's like it's like I was really going thinking that like. She could be something, you know. She could be really. Good. She could be really good at this. Um, she just needs to get, you know, more matches because the athletic ability is there. And Rosa was a good opponent for her. I thought Rosa did a good job with her. We had Renee with Tony Storm, Mariah, uh, Mariah and Luther, and they announced next week it's Thunder versus Mariah in a number one contenders match. And at first, Tony was outraged, but then kissed Mariah, called her a genius. And said, Thunder, you should have retired as champion because you're never going to hold this belt again. We had an awesome Will Ospreay video package narrated by Excalibur. This was great. Just mm -hmm. going through his career, much like the uh, Brian yeah. Danielson one they had on, on Dynamite. Yeah, they showed clips of him like doing backyard wrestling. Yeah. You know, like as a teenager and, and like when he was 19 years old and Rev Pro. And then, uh, you know, some of the Rev Pro hi highlights when he was very, very young. And then they showed... You know, his highlights from New Japan as well. So then we had uh, Shibata, Danielson, and Claudio versus Lance Archer and the Righteous. And main event was great. Was I really mean, hopefully uh, Shibata, Danielson, and Claudio are big enough stars because as a match, you know, foregone conclusion. I mean. And it's, look, it's the Righteous in the main event. So, I mean, as yes. far as like, as far as like carrying ratings on a tough Saturday night, and this was <laughs> those basketball games. By the way, the the, the Monday um, there's uh, the there's a women's the women's basketball game that goes against Raw on Monday is even bigger than it's it's going to be huge. So um, well, Raw has announced that they are going to be doing the first hour commercial free. 
Yeah, they need it. And The Rock is going to be there and Roman Reigns. And Rains. Roman Reigns, so they'll be okay. So they're doing everything in their power to make sure you watch this go home. Yeah, show. they'll be they'll be okay. I mean I'm not but but whatever the number is, let's just say that they get it up to like one point eight five million or whatever or it's one whatever the number is, it probably would be about ten percent higher if it wasn't for this game because this game this game is bigger than The Rock, you know. I mean it's gonna it's gonna do um uh, you know at least, you know, I mean I, I I'd say at least triple. With with um, maybe maybe a lot more. I mean, there's people who are talking like this is going to do bad NFL number, a bad NFL game number. So um, you know, the women's tournament because Caitlin Clark, Caitlin Clark's like a super celebrity right now. So um, everything that you know, every game that she's on until uh, they lose um, is going to do is going to do great. Well, Shabbat ended up hitting the PK on Vincent, got the pin. Lots of great near falls there at the end. Fans loved. Claudio and Lance pounding on each other. A lot, a lot of meat chance there. Very, very good match. And uh, like I said, very much like Dynamite. Great opener, great main event. And, uh, you know, the rest of the show was, was pretty good. So good it, was, it was it was, a, it was a, to sit there and watch two hours, it was very entertaining. Um, again, you know what that means. You know, I mean, there, you know, I mean, from a rating standpoint, you know, I mean, it's. It's it's very very tough. It's it's WrestleMania week, and you know the, the Rock's out there, and 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 you know there's like there's nothing that they can do to compete with that. You know, I mean they just have to do their best, and they're, you know they're doing they're doing the best, and they have you know the whole show they they built up they built up a lot of matches. You know, I mean they they it's not like they're not building up matches, not like they're not doing video features. Maybe they're even doing too many. Not like they're not doing storylines. They're it's just one of those things where. You know, guys, you can say guys got to get over, but, um, you know, it, it, you know, when, when WWE is this dominant, you know, it is, it's just, it's just very, very difficult um, for, you know, it, it's, and it's always been that way. When WWE is super hot, it's very difficult for the, the other brand. Well, I thought the SmackDown show was very good as well. This was uh, second to last SmackDown before WrestleMania. We had Randy Orton and Kevin Owens versus Pretty Deadly. And they had a very clever finish, which was uh, Orton's outside clearing off the table for his back suplex. Ref is telling him to stop. Logan Paul hits the ring, knocks out Kevin with the brass knucks. Kit gets the pin on Kevin Owens. And Randy Orton, this is very clever, Randy Orton gets back in the ring. He sees his team is lost. He sees Kevin Owens down. At first, he's furious. He's screaming at he Kevin. He started yelling at Kevin Owens, what the hell did you do? What did you do, you idiot? You lost these guys. But then they're showing a replay on the big screen, and Orton sees a replay. And he realizes what happens. And Kevin starts screaming at him, he's under the ring. So Orton goes under the ring, grabs Logan Paul. Fans are going nuts. He goes to uh, put him through the announce table, but pretty deadly makes a save. And Orton ends up chasing... Uh, or uh, Logan to the back. Logan jumps in a uh, steals a car actually, and yeah. speeds out of there. Man, and, that guy! That guy between everything that that guy's doing, car th- car th- thievery too. Yeah. So then uh, Randy apologized to Kevin and thought it was all very well done. Very, very well done. Well, they they they, they also destroyed him with an RKO and uh, um, they did beat up uh, Kit and. Uh, yeah, yeah. So so they didn't escape unscathed at all. They got their win, and then they got laid out. Yeah. We had a, a EO promo, which was all subtitled, talking about... I thought well done, though. It was very well done. And then yeah. after after she did the deal, talking about, Bailey, I'll regret being your friend for the rest of my life. You're an embarrassment of the company. I hope after Mania I never have, to, never have to see you again. And so then, you know, the director goes, cut! And so she starts taking her stuff off, and all of a sudden Bailey rushes in, Beats her ass. They had a big brawl. Destroyed the set. Very good segment. We had Nick Aldis introducing Jade Cargill. They gave her the total superstar entrance. And she said that uh, she was a -a once-in-a-lifetime superstar. And like everybody else in this locker room, as great as this locker room was, there's nobody like me. And she said the storm has arrived. And there was more to come later. We had AJ and Nick Aldis doing a promo where... AJ says, you sure that L.A. Knight's not going to be here? And Nick says, I told him not to be here. Right? I, I, I uh, asked him. I asked him. And then AJ says, well, you should have told him. Yeah. We had Grayson Waller and Austin Theory versus the Street Profits in a tournament match. And Street Profits are making their comeback. Montez goes up top. They cut to the big screen. And 
Uh, Cross and Scarlet have laid out Lashley and B-Fab. So Dawkins starts running to the back. Montez is distracted. He goes for the frog splash theory, gets the knees up, cradles and pins him. And then AOP jumps the Street Profits. And Cross and Scarlet come down, and they're just killing these guys. Lashley tries to make the save. He gets killed. And so clearly they got something going on. Oh, they do. uh, WrestleMania. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that. That's going to be a match on WrestleMania. By the six, way, is six, we'll, uh, six, six man tag. Yeah, we'll get to in a moment. But they've announced the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal participants. So we'll go over those. Yeah, and that's that'll be next. That'll be on Friday night, and not at WrestleMania. So then we add what I actually thought was the best thing on this show. By the way, by the way, the um, even though Theory and Waller won, it is not necessarily that they're going to be in that match. Mm. Yeah. So Santos comes down to the ring. They might, they might be. They might be. There's still there is a meeting upcoming where they will make a decision on that. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So Santos says Ray is the greatest of all time, or at least he was. I made one phone call to a man who despises you. Out comes Dom, and Dom, you know, Santos thanks him and says, "We didn't see eye to eye at first. We had a rough go early, but." I can now say this to your face, you were right. And Dom is talking about making his deadbeat dad's life a living hell. So Ray and the LWO come out and they square off. And Ray challenges Legato to a match at WrestleMania. Tag team match. He says, uh, yep, I want uh, Santos and Dom against me and a partner of my choosing at Mania. And the fans start chanting for Carlito. That was embarrassing. They zoom in on Carlito's face. No, this was on. This was done for a reason. They yeah. zoom in on Carlito's face, and he's like, he's rubbing his hands together. He's smiling. Oh, yeah. He's all ready. And Dom says, "Which of these dorks is going to be your partner?" And Ray says, "My partner." And as he's talking, they show Carlito again. He's all excited. Yeah. They go, "My partner is the newest member of the LWO, Dragon Lee." Yeah. And I got to say, you know. Carlito was awesome because he didn't do the, you know, all angry and all frustrated. It was you very know, subtle. He was very subtle. Like, he, he smiles and he goes. He smiled and he he, he, huh. he, con- he congratulated uh, Dragon Lee yep. and everything like that. But you but could you see could, that he was see. pissed off. You could see just a little bit, yeah. But he was, he was putting on a happy face. He was great in this segment. And yeah. honestly, you know, the camera work was what made it too obvious what was going on here. Like, if the camera hadn't kept focusing on him, like, this would have been even better. Like, you would have just, you know, if you were paying attention, you'd have seen him all excited, and then the smile just kind of doesn't go all the way away, but he's kind of got a mad smile now. I mean, I thought it was great. You can see where it's going, but uh, it was very, very well done. So it is WrestleMania, Dragon Lee and Ray versus Santos and Dominic in a tag match. I can't say more, huh? That's what they. Uh, that's what they say. That is what is advertised. Yes. Judgment Day is backstage, and uh, they're having an issue. Dom is not telling Rhea anything. Priest thinks like, "What's going on with you guys?" And Priest is hiding something from them too. Well, he makes it very clear that WrestleMania is about more than us as a group. It's also about us as individuals. So that's and the Rhea cash says, in the tease. What's that supposed to mean? He goes, "Ah, hey, you know, don't worry about it." So yeah, they're 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 planting seeds all over this show. You can see it. Like this is yeah. not going to be a deal where everything builds to WrestleMania and then we got nothing the next day. I mean, oh no, they got all kinds of stuff for the fall for the for the summer. Yes, yeah. New Catch Republic versus Angel and Umberto in another tournament match. Uh, Bate and Dunn hit the burning hammer, the Birmingham hammer. Well, the got deal the is is that that in the brawl after that thing, um, Angel and Umberto. He's no, now Berto instead of Umberto. Um They got laid out, so they came in injured yes. to this match. Yes. And so a lot of this was during the break, and it kind of seemed a little bit rushed. But uh, Baton Dunn won, so they're moving on in the tournament. Paul Heyman did a promo. He revealed that Roman Reigns had ordered The Rock to take out Cody on Monday. And now he was ordering Solo to take out Jay so that he won't make it to WrestleMania. So that's coming up on SmackDown. What for on Friday? I think so, yeah. I thought it might be. I thought I thought the, I thought that he was going to go on Monday. It could be Raw. Actually, let me look at the Raw lineup cuz I got to They haven't announced there's a match on Raw. It's not been announced. Okay. As far as I know, but I I 
I felt watching it that that was that was scheduled for Raw because you know, actually Jay's no, on. here's here's Friday SmackDown is Jey Uso versus Solo for the next Friday. Yep. Okay, so I must have missed that. So Friday is the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, Jey Uso versus Solo, Tyler and uh, Pete Dunne versus Waller and Theory, Zelina versus Elektra, and uh, the KO Show with Kevin and Randy. Mm-hmm. So that's coming up on Friday. Why would Tyler and uh, why would they have that tag match? It's, aren't aren't they both it's, in already? Uh, no, I think there's. Uh, actually, I don't know. I'd have to look at the brackets. No, I mean, I like, think yeah, they're both in. They're both. They're both. They announced. They're both, both allegedly in. Yes, they, they 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 are announced both as in. Like I said, like that may change, but they are announced both as in. Yeah. Yes. The so, the so why ladder do we need match that? now is Judgment Day DIY New Day Miz and R Truth Waller and Theory and Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate. That's what's been advertised. Yeah. So why they're having a match? They're just having a match. AJ did a promo. This kind of sucked. I'm, I'm not in this feud. He's like, uh, you know, I know L.A.'s here, so come on out. L.A. doesn't come out. And he goes, well, you know, he could be a cameraman. He beats up a cameraman. It's not, uh, or he shoves him out of the ring. It's not L.A. And then some some guy jumps the rail in a mask. AJ goes, that must be him. They unmask him as, like, just a fan. Guy gets arrested. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. like, why the fuck would you book that? That did wonders in WCW. Fans well, jumping the rail to get in the ring. Yeah, they they worked they worked fans jumping the ring and and the wrestlers beating them up. And then what happened? Fans led jumping, to actual fans jumping the ring. Fans were jumping the rail jumping for like rail, weeks. Yeah. yeah, it didn't. It's not like it happened once. It happened like three times. Yeah, like that was. I think one time, and also you got to remember that this audience is a hell of a lot smarter than the audience like twenty five years ago. So it's it's probably not going to lead to that. But yeah, the, when WCW did it, it was uh, it turned out to be a really dumb idea. So then, finally, another production guy takes off his hat, and it's L.A. and he beats up AJ and vows he'll beat him up at WrestleMania. It was he cut, he cut he cut his promo. And then the uh, main event was Bianca and Dakota, and had a good match, there was some good heat, and the finish was a little bit weird as Bianca spears her. And as she as she goes for the KOD, like you can see the ref looking down the aisle, and uh, and he counts the pin. Mm-hmm. And the moment he counts at three, like damage control slides in. And I don't know if they were supposed to break it up, and they were late, and the ref was just like, "They ain't gonna get here. I gotta count." I, I I didn't think that was. I think that they were. I, I think that it was supposed to be exactly as how, how it was. It doesn't matter at the end of the day. They had a big brawl, and then uh, Naomi who earlier had a meeting with Bianca, and they, they're on the same page. She tried to make the same uh, save, and she got beat down. And then they hit Jade's music, and she slowly saunters to the ring. And once she got there, she only yep. had to do three things. It was a big boot, a pop-up power bomb, and Jaded. But everything looked great. She came off as a big superstar. Yep, she, and, she came off well. And they announced Jade, Bianca, Naomi versus Damage Control. At WrestleMania, so yep, you know everybody waiting like, what's going on with Jade? What's going on with Jade? This is what's going on with Jade. I mean, yeah. they pushed her like she's one of the tippy top stars in this division now, and yeah. uh, and she did great in this segment. So we'll see how it goes at WrestleMania. That's the big match. Mm. So uh, Raw Monday, we'll do the lineups before we go here. We got the Rock and Roman Reigns appearing. We got DIY and the New Day. Versus Priest, Balor, Dominic, and JD. And they've added Candice LeRae, Indy Hartwell versus Ivy and Maxine. The mm-hmm. NXT show has Anderson and Gallows versus Axiom and Nathan Frazier versus Joaquin and Cruz del Toro. Winner gets the tag title shot at Stan the Liber. Carmelo Hayes and Trick have their final face off. Lyra and Roxanne are on Supernova Sessions. Sol Ruka versus Blair Davenport. And Fallon Henley versus JC Jane. And then for Dynamite in Worcester, Massachusetts, we have Joe and Swerve doing a contract signing. We have Young Bucks versus Best Friends in a semifinal. We have Mariah May versus Thunder Rosa number one contenders match. Will Ospreay versus Hobbs. Billy Gunn versus Jay White. And Chris Jericho will call out Hook. Whatever that mm-hmm. means. And then the uh, Friday SmackDown show. The names announced for the Andre the Giant Battle Royal, which will be taking place on SmackDown. We've got Andrade, Ricochet, 
Chad Gable, Bronson Reed, Shinsuke Nakamura, Omas, the Creed Brothers, Ivar, Tozawa, Otis, J.D. McDonough, Apollo Crews, Cedric Alexander, Ashanti the Adonis, Elton Prince and Kit Wilson, Cameron Grimes, Veer, and Sanga. Mm -hmm. So I would say your favorites would be Andrade, Chad Gable, or Bronson Reed, I would think. Mm, Yeah, yeah. I mean, Bronson Reed, we know, is getting a push because he's going to probably be facing Sami Zayn after if Sami Zayn wins the Intercontinental. Yep. And keep in mind, I think uh, a week after Mania, they're in Montreal. So mm-hmm. they are, yeah. I think pretty good chance that Sammy's probably winning that title. You might guess. I think there's a. I mean, he should. It's time. I mean, Gunther's had it long. More He's than had long it now. long enough. It's time. Plus, 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 they could probably do a deal where Sammy wins by, you know, a semi fluke, and and have Gunther in there ready to go with whether it's Seth or Drew or Damian Priest or whoever. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we got to wrap it up for today. It's Easter tomorrow, everybody. So uh, everybody have a great Easter. Dave and I are going to be back on Monday following Raw. We'll talk all of the news and uh, and hopefully maybe a little bit more about CMLL because I'm going to try and watch more of it. So that'll be the plan. And uh, New Observer's up. Dave and Garrett's up. Uh, new back issue on Monday. Check it all out. And that's it. We'll talk to you again after a while.